Hello everyone and welcome to The Grove. My name is Samara Rev and welcome to another episode of Mob Mixer. In this series, I take two mobs from Minecraft and I mix them together into one humanoid character design. In today's episode, we are going to the Nether to meet a lord and one of his apprentices. I would have had both apprentices in this video, but I had a recording problem with one of them, so they will be shown at a later date. But for now, let's go into the speed paints. We will start with the Lord, and he is a hybrid between a Ravager and a Hoglet. I couldn't think of a good name or what meaning I should draw from for his name, so I'm going to let the comments help me decide on this one. But for the video, I will be calling him Netherlord. Netherlord was given over to the Piglin Brutes at a young age to learn how to fight in the somewhat unforgiving landscape of the Nether. Learning how to fight under strict guidelines caused him to adopt a practicality-focused mindset where unless an activity or an item has a practical long-term use, it's likely not worth pursuing. For example, he only valued Netherwort when he realized he could brew potions, but he always valued gold because he was useful for trading. This also comes into play when he begins to raise the apprentices that he gains. He is a stern teacher whose main goal morphs into, keep, into forcing his apprentices to accept the world as harsh and that they can't depend on anyone else. And this is what ends up moving him into the antagonistic role. He isn't just a lawful neutral character, he's lawful evil, because he's he intends to punish or go out of his way to make another character's life miserable, although it's due to sort of like the moral code that he has. And in terms of design, he his husks are from his hoglin side, and his forehead horns are from his ravager side. I wanted to include both, so it alludes to both sides and since they sort of seem to balance out the character's face, it made it look cool, and I really like the mohawk and how that turned out. But because I knew he was a warrior, I decided to practice drawing armor. This took a long time. I didn't really practice drawing armor, although I did a few sketches. I mainly looked a lot of references and it took all the time that I needed to get this drawing done. I would estimate the drawing time to be about three or four hours which is probably the longest I've taken on a single character drawing, or at least I know it's for this series. And the recording file for the speed paint is like an hour and 20 minutes long. It's, this is sped up, I think eight times, eight to 10 times. And it's still like five minutes long. It, it's really long. But it was well worth it because I really like how this character turned out in both what the design behind his character and for the physical design himself. And one of the things I liked about the armor is the final, final design for his shoulder pads. I also like how I did his belt, although the sheath was annoying. It annoyed me during the drawing process and annoyed me during the line art process. Oh my word, it was so frustrating. But I eventually find something that's like, okay, I can at least leave it. <laughs> but man, it was annoying. <laughs> but like hands, once you succeed, it works quite well. Or at least you find something, you can leave it. So that's how I ended up moving on. For actual colors, you'll sort of see it later in the video, but I decided to use the Ravager colors for the armor because it reminded me of the color scheme of Netherite. And then I tried to use Piglin for the horns and for the rest of the skin tone. I tried to get the darkest skin tone I could while still making it look like a hoglin. And I think I found a balance. It works <laughs> as close enough as I could. Also, if you're wondering why I had this sort of split in the boots armor, it's supposed to be a reference to the hooves of both Ravagers, which I assume have hooves, and the those of the Hoglins. See the Hoglins, you can sort of see that they're split hooves. And here's me trying to decide on a skin color. It was actually really interesting to find out that Hoglins don't have pupils. So I had to just use a dark color for the pupil. And then for these horns, I had to figure out, okay, how do I do the horn shading? Because turns out there's sort of layers to the horns. So I had to figure that out as well. It's really cool how I can get the different challenges for different characters. And I really like 
how each one has been turning out so far. So that's one of the things that I hope to get, hope to continue, is that there's been things such as Aussie's jacket, flannel to make that look good, or so this for netherite armor. I'm excited to see where this goes from here. So here's me putting in all the armor. The light blue is actually from the armor pieces on the Ravager. So if you're confused on where that comes from, that's where the blue is coming from. Which I kind of like because it's dark enough and desaturated enough that it's not a huge thing, but it still breaks up the monotony of the armor. That is the end of this speed paint. The first apprentice is a hybrid between a shulker and a magma cube. He is the first character that I drew for the nether, and when I finished drawing him, I immediately thought he looked like a Brian. I cannot explain why, he, he just does to me. And so I decided that is gonna be his name. Apparently it means high or noble based on my internet searches, so the fact he's an apprentice to a lord works out quite well. In terms of personality, I imagined him as an easygoing, friendly guy. He enjoys life to the fullest, exploring the nether and later the overworld, wanting to just explore everything he can while also befriending everyone and everything that he can. And it, he, this does make him a tad naive, but it comes from a place of goodness because he just hopes for the good in everyone. While he doesn't want to fight, he would l listen to Netherlord because he trusted him, but eventually he would turn on Netherlord when he realizes how much Netherlord is a threat to his friends. So he would, instead of using his fighting skills for something negative, he would use them for something positive in order to protect those close to him. And this would mean that he's that he ends up as sort of a foil for Netherlord, or rather, Netherlord turns into a foil for him because it was sort of the two different sides of how to use strength. And Brian also looks into seemingly meaningless activities, such as creating art or doing architecture that might not have any defense value, which would be a direct contrast to how Netherlord is very... Uh, it's not productivity, it's practicality-minded. Uh, in terms of design, though, Brian's backpack is a shulker, shulker box, because I thought that was one of the easiest ways to incorporate the shulker box. But I also tried to get the boxy hair. I tried to include as many pockets as I could while still keeping that youth look. So that's why I went for cargo shorts, is because then you have that sort of adventure style while still having pockets. And I'm just now remembering that I also used a similar tactic with Rich, not Richard, with Robert. So that's a funny commonality that I did not intend, but it worked out. I decided also to add the poncho to increase the shulker coloring on him, which you'll see later. Um, I also like the idea of him just having a poncho. Maybe the, maybe the rain in the overworld burns him and so it has the hood, but honestly, I just did it because I thought it was a cool design. Shulker box took a long way to do, long time to make too, because there was a lot of like alignment issues that I had. Because my original drawing was too thin, it didn't look correct, and so I had to work with perspective again, which is always hard. I'm not even sure if the final product is the best it could be, but I just had to sort of improvise things. So it works in the end. Could I have done more in the original sketch to make it easier on myself? Yes. But when I'm looking at the original sketch, I don't usually, or I don't often realize how out of perspective it is. Because the shulker box in this one was sort of like the sheath for the Netherlord character. Because I had to go back and figure it out. <laughs> I do like how it turned out though.
And now I'm moving on to the coloring, which was a bit challenging because as you see here, I was trying to find like a good magma cube picture and then I just like realized how dark magma cube was. So I did stick to my guns and try to use a darker tone since it seemed to fit the magma cube. But that also meant I was using a dark color that is way darker than I probably would have chosen. So I just tried to take one of the reds and you have all lighter outline so that you can still get the definition. Because my line art is black. I just use black because it's the easiest color for me to, to use. It's just the sort of the style that I have chosen. So I had to break away from my normal style and find a color that was bright enough that could still be seen. Here's me trying to do it, find a different color. At one point I tried this like dark yellow, but I decided to go with the dark red. And I think I found a good sort of mix between the two. I still also try to use the dark colors from the magma cube, but it took a while to get the hair and then the clothing that wasn't shulk or related into something that worked. But I think I figured out a color palette that works well enough to work against me. <laughs> I think there's one part of every picture that I've created where I'm like, hey, I could have done this better or worked on it harder, but at some point you just gotta leave it, so. I decided to go with the magma cube eyes because I thought they looked more interesting than the simple shulker eyes. I think the simple shulker eyes are just black, so they wouldn't even show up well. So since I was using primarily the magma cube color scheme for the skin tone and face, I decided to just go with the just go with the magma cube. I also decided to go with the internal shulker colors for the cube itself. Thank you for watching this video. I know from other YouTubers asking for name suggestions that the internet can come up with good ideas, so if you have any for Netherlord, please leave them down in the comments below. The next video will be a song, but in the video after that, we will meet the second apprentice and a fourth Nether-related character, so subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss those videos. My gaming channel is also going to be premiering next week, so if you enjoy that type of content, feel free to subscribe to that channel using the channel link in the description. See you next time!